Hello, this is Robbie Mitchell here from Head in the Cloud Development. Today I'm going to give you an introduction to NetSuite's SuiteScript 2.0 API. We'll be coding in TypeScript using some of the build tools that Head in the Cloud has created to make writing and uploading code faster, easier, and more reliable. The goals of this video are to get you set up with a development environment that can automatically upload TypeScript code to NetSuite, to enable you to have SuiteScript 2.0 API IntelliSense as you type, to walk you through a few examples of real SuiteScript 2.0 scripts, to demonstrate how to upload and implement a script in NetSuite, and finally to see how to debug your scripts live in NetSuite. This video is intended for NetSuite developers and administrators. You should have access to the administrator role in NetSuite to do everything I cover here. You should be at least familiar with JavaScript and basic web technologies here, and also I assume that you've at least looked at the SuiteScript API before. So first, let's download and install a couple of pieces of necessary free software. First, the IDE we'll be using is VS Code. This is a relatively new IDE made by Microsoft. It's a nice, lightweight, cross-platform coding app. So go ahead and download and install that. Second, you'll need to have Node.js installed. You can get it at nodejs.org. I recommend the long-term support version. Okay, now we're ready to set up our coding environment. First, you'll need to create a folder to hold your scripts for this project. Here I've created mine in my home folder and I've named it ss2video-sweetscripts. So now let's open up that folder in VS Code. I'll use the file open menu. Now you'll notice that I've already added a few files here to save some time. You'll need to create these files as well, so let's take a look at each one and I'll explain them. The first file I've started here is gulpfile.js. Gulp is a tool that automates uploading groups of files. Go ahead and copy these two lines of code into your file. Also here I'll mention that you may need to install Gulp globally if you haven't already. To bring up a terminal in VS Code, you can use the View Integrated Terminal menu option. From here you can install Gulp with the command npm install g gulp. This should take 10 seconds or so. Second, let's take a look at the package.json file. When using Node.js, a package.json file tells the Node package manager which packages and versions need to be installed. This file also contains some important parameters for getting your code files uploaded to NetSuite. For example, on line 10, this is where we need to insert your NetSuite account number so that the uploader knows which NetSuite account we're targeting. So this file is how we tell it to load in our three head in the cloud modules that we use to validate our code against the SuiteScript API and to upload it to NetSuite. Go ahead and pause the video here, get your NetSuite account number, and paste it in on line 10. The third file I'm starting with here is tsconfig.json. This file controls how TypeScript files are handled. Again, I recommend you pause the video here and fill this file in on your computer. The fourth file you'll need to set up is the tasks.json file here in the .vs code folder. Again, go ahead and pause the video and set this up. Now it's time to install our node modules. So again, if you don't already have the integrated terminal open, you can use the view integrated terminal menu option here. Then just enter the command npm install. This should take a minute or two. When it's done, you should see that it added a node modules folder and a package lock.json file. You can ignore these for now. Finally, let's set up a keyboard shortcut that'll help us when it's time to upload code. So in the code menu, or the file menu in Windows, go to Preferences, Keyboard Shortcuts. From here, click on the Edit Keybindings.json link. And on the left, you'll see all the default key bindings, and on the right is a list of your custom bindings. So for our build shortcut, set the shortcut key to be Shift-Command-T, and set the command to be Workbench.Action.Tasks.RunTask. Then you can go ahead and close these. Now we're ready to start coding. First, of course, let's talk about what we want our script to do. We'll start with something simple. Let's say that on a customer record, we have an accounting email field, and we want this email to automatically fill into the email field on a sales order. We can do that pretty easily with a client script, so let's get to it. So in my project folder here, I'll create a folder called ssv2. This is where our script files will go. So here, start a new file, and we'll call it salesorderscripts.ts. So at the top of every SuiteScript 2.0 file, we need to have a block comment with some metadata in it. 
first thing I like to put in is the file name itself. Next I put in the at end script name tag, and here I put what I'm going to set as the title of the actual script record in NetSuite. This tag isn't actually required anymore, but I still find it to be very helpful. I'm going to name this script SSV2 Demo Sales Order Client. Next is the at end script type tag. This is a required tag. For this example, the value here will be client script. Finally, the last one is the at n API version, which is 2.0. So under the header comment, the next section is where we import any external modules that we're going to be using in this script. There's one here that we'll pretty much always add, and that is the entry points from our n types module. You'll see why this is needed here in a second. You could ignore this red squiggly line for now. It's just letting us know that this variable hasn't been used yet. So now with my goal of looking up that accounting email field in mind, I need to think about which client script entry point to use. If you're not at all familiar with these, take a look at them in the NetSuite help documentation before proceeding here. I want my email automation to happen right away when a new sales order page loads. So I'm gonna use the page init entry point here. So to start our page init function, type in export function page init. Make sure to capitalize the I and page in it. Now this is where the entry points object comes in. Almost every script entry point in SuiteScript 2 comes with a context object that gives you access to the current record, execution mode, and things like that. So we can add that in here. We can use our entry points object to specify that this is a client script and that it's the page in it entry point context. Now, just to see what this allows you to do, simply type in context dot, and you'll see what is made available to you in a page init function. To see even more, add on current record dot, and you'll see all the methods that, are, that SuiteScript 2.0 gives you on a client current record object. Let's not get too sidetracked, though. We have a job to do here. I like to start simple in new scripts and do things iteratively. So first, let's just hard code in a fake email so we can get something up and running here. Then to set the field value, we can say context.currentRecord.setValue email and our accounting email variable. So now this code is ready to run. But there are a couple of more steps to get our uploader up and running. First, we need to install our uploader bundle. So go to Customization, Suite Bundler, Search and Install Bundles. Search for Head in the Cloud. And it should be the first one that comes up. So again, this bundle is free for anyone to use and install. So go ahead and do that. Second, you need to set up a file on your computer that stores your NetSuite credentials for the uploader to read. The file name needs to be simply .netsuite-credentials, and the content here is in JSON. Pause the video and get this file set up on your end. You'll need to save the file in your home folder for the uploader to be able to access it. So the format here is that each object here in this JSON file, I have two, represents access to a NetSuite account. So you'll likely start with just one of these. The key of the object is the NetSuite account number, and then there are fields for the account name, the email, your password, and the role you're using. The name field value doesn't matter to the uploader, it's just here to help you remember which NetSuite account this is. It's also worth mentioning here that if there are certain types of special characters in your password, it won't work. Things like exclamations and periods are okay, but dollar signs may not work. So once you have this up and running, you can use the keyboard shortcut we set up earlier to see the build menu. So if I push Command Shift T, this is what comes up. I'm going to select build and upload just this file. And if the upload is successful, this is what the output should look like. Now we can create this script record in NetSuite. So we'll go to Customization, Scripting, Scripts, New. Then enter in Sales Order Scripts and click Create Script Record. Here I'll paste in the script name that I said I would use, and I'll set the ID to underscore 
sales order client demo. Save this. Here you'll notice that NetSuite automatically recognizes that we are using the PageNet client entry point and that it's the only one we're using at this point. So let's deploy this to sales orders and leave it in testing mode for now. So now to test it, let's go create a sales order from our test customer here. And if we scroll down to the communication tab, there's our test email address. So great, it's working so far. Okay, now let's set it up to actually look up that accounting email from the customer. To do this, we need to use SuiteScript 2's search module, so let's import that in. The format for importing a module is to give it a name and then require the n slash module name, like this. So first we need to get our customer ID, so let's get that here. The field ID is entity. And again, I'll use the context.currentRecord object and the get value method to get the field value. So now we can do our lookup. We'll save our customer values, search.lookup fields. The record type is customer, the record ID is customer ID, and the columns we want to look up is the cust entity accounting email field. So now the IDE is not happy with us because it knows that the ID attribute here is supposed to be a string. You'll see this if you mouse over the error. The problem is that our record.getValue method can return several different data types. You'll see that if you mouse over the customer ID variable. So in this situation, we just need to tell the IDE what type of data it is that we're getting here. We know that when we're getting the value of a select field, it's always going to be a string. So we can specify that here by adding as string to the end of the line here. And that makes our red squiggly line go away. Now I can set the accounting email variable to come from our customer values. So now I can use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift B to upload this file. Now if I refresh my sales order, we'll see if this works. And there it is. There's our actual accounting email from the customer record. So now we'll look at doing this using the new Promise API included in SuiteScript 2.0. This really comes in handy if you're doing searches or lookups that take more than a second or two, because without a Promise, the user is just going to be sitting there with an unresponsive browser while the data loads. Explaining Promises and asynchronous design is beyond the scope of this video, but I will give you an example of the formatting here at least. Most of the SuiteScript 2.0 API calls that do any database reading or writing now come with a promise mode as well. I'll leave the synchronous version of this code here for reference as we write the asynchronous version here below it. It's very similar, but now on the search lookup we include a dot promise after the API function, like this. The function signature is exactly the same as it was above. And after it now, we use this dot then format to say what code should run once the promise has been resolved. Now here in parentheses is where we put the values that the promise will return. Here it's the customer values that we're looking up. So now the code that I put in here is what will run when the promise is finished. So here I'm going to cut and paste these two lines of code. So here I'm reading the accounting emails from this customer values object, and then we're setting the record value using that again. I'll comment out line 14 for now. So I'll go ahead and upload this, and let's test it again. Again, I'll just refresh the sales order, and switch to the communication tab, and look, it still works, so that's good. Okay, one last thing to cover here, and that is how to debug your code. Let's try something different here. We'll go to create a new sales order from scratch. And here if I scroll down, nothing shows up in the communications tab. And if I open my browser console, uh-oh, there was an uncaught sweet script error in my promise. So let's see what went wrong here. 
So there's a really easy way to debug client code in NetSuite. All we have to do is insert a debugger keyword where we want our breakpoint to be in our code. So I'll put that here at the top and then I'll upload this again. Now if I refresh the page again with my console open, code execution is paused here at my breakpoint. Now I can see that the problem is likely that my customer ID variable is empty. And that makes sense since I haven't set the customer field in this sales order. So to fix this, I'll go back to my code and we'll set up a second entry point so that if a user starts a new sales order like this and then types in a customer, it'll work in this situation as well. So to do this, we'll use the field changed client entry point. And here I'll say that if the field that changed was the entity field, then we want to run our code. So what I'll do is I'll cut and paste my code and put it in its own function. We'll call it set accounting email. Now we're, we see a couple of red squiggly lines here because the context object doesn't exist in this function. So to fix that, we'll pass in the current record object here to this function. Then we can get rid of the context dot pieces here. And here I can call the function from page init and pass it my current record. And I can do the same thing here in field change. And now here we just need to wrap this lookup in an if block that says if there is a customer ID. And that should do it. So now I'll upload this again. And we'll reload our sales order. And here I'll check the communication tab. It's blank now, but if I enter a customer, it sets it to the accounting email, as it should. So that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed the SuiteScript 2.0 intro in TypeScript. And here are some recommendations on where you can go to learn more from here. Feel free to get in touch if you have any questions or comments. Otherwise, we'll see you at SweetWorld.